G'day guys, welcome back to ABCPE and this is the site where we try and make the sometimes difficult concepts of BCPE as simple as ABC. Please don't forget you can contact us with any questions or queries you might have, um, we'd love to help you out um, so please hit us up on email or Facebook and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, today's lesson is going to be on Newton's third law and um, my wife will tell you that I'm not a very good gambler, but this is the third year of the new state of design, which is, and this new state of design was when biomechanics was brought in. So in the first year of the state of design 2018, there was a question on Newton's second law. Last year there was a question on Newton's first law. And so Newton's third law hasn't been assessed yet. So maybe this year is the year. Anyway, let's get stuck into it. So don't forget when we start our biomechanics questions or theory, we want to always start with the definition because we want to go deep and the deep standing for definition. So in the case of Newton's third law, it's one of the most famous ones and hopefully you've heard of it before and it's for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So you might have heard of this, but what does this actually mean? What it means is when two objects come into contact with each other, they'll apply equal and opposite forces on each other but they'll be in different directions. And the greater the force, the greater the force that's applied back. So, so as with most of the things in VCEP, obviously you're gonna to have to put this into a sporting context. So what does that mean? This is often asked in two um, different areas. A lot of the time it's about someone trying to jump as high as they can in, into the air and then often sprinting and sprinting out of the blocks or a jump start and swimming often seems to come up in this sort of in Newton's third law context. So firstly let's go into the um, a gymnast or an ice skater or a trampolinist or whatever it might be. And it's about them pushing into the ground and the harder they push into the ground, the higher off the ground they'll end up. That's because whatever force we put into the ground is going to have an equal and opposite reaction pushing us into the air. So for example, if a gymnast wants to do a somersault, they're likely to get more air time, which is the reaction force, if they push harder into the ground initially, or an action force. So I don't want to put Layla in every video. So I promise I won't put Layla in every video, but I think it does give us a good real life example of Newton's third law. Please ignore the unicorn face paint she has on today and let's just concentrate on the actual jumping. So as I extend this forward, and this is obviously in slow motion, the force that she puts into the trampoline there is the action force and the reaction force is gonna be the springs pushing back up against her. The harder that she pushes down, the greater height she's going to get up into the air because for the equal for every action sorry which the action in this case is her pushing on the tramp there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction coming off the tramp into Layla. Okay now please don't try this one at home but now we've got four guys trying to put force into this trampoline and as they push down they're going to put this action force into the tramp which is then going to make an equal and opposite reaction which is going to be transferred to this lucky fella and he's going to go flying. So four guys pushing down with great force, gives him a lot of air time and he's managed to be able to land safely thank god, plenty of flips. Alrighty, so let's put this into action now with a practice question. Explain how an ice skater could use the theory from Newton's third law to help her performance during a routine. So we hope you went deep with this one and you stated that Newton's third law says that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Then you want to explain it and you talk about the ice skater can put more force into the ground in order to get an equal and opposite reaction force against her. The greater this reaction force, the longer the ice skater will stay in the air. 
And how you can link that to performance is by saying this will allow her to spin more often or spin faster. Um, Another question you might receive is uh, one thing for this. Why would a sprinter use blocks in relation to Newton's third law? So let's try and put this one into action. So here's a photo of a couple of the students I'm lucky enough to get to teach using blocks to start them. And as you can see by the angle of their body, because they've produced a force against the blocks, there's going to be an equal and opposite force into them, which will propel them on the track. And due to the angle of the body here, that means that this acceleration is going to happen quickly, which means she'll get a really good start. So the blocks are giving an equal and opposite uh, reaction in the direction that these runners are wanting to go. Now, when these two runners are not using blocks, you can see that their bodies are a lot more upright because the force that they've put into the track is applying an equal and opposite force against them in the direction that's been applied. And because there's no blocks, that force is now more vertical than it was with the blocks, which means a lot of the force is going to go up in the air instead of towards the finish line. So here's an example of an exemplar for you to have a look at in relation to that question. And hopefully this helps in your understanding of Newton's third law. So thank you very much for watching. Hope that has helped. And if you need any more information, please visit our website at abcpe.com.au or look us up on Facebook. Thanks, guys.